Hi there, Airplays. In this video, we're going to look at control of climate change for your AQA, A-level in environmental science. Now, there are lots and lots of things that we as humans can do to, well, fix the damage that we've done to this. And if you want to make sure that you've got all of these sorted in your notes, then over on our website, there's a set of free flashcards, set of free questions, all just waiting for you. Lesson six, control of climate change. How can we control greenhouse gases? There are a range of techniques being used and many being designed and trialled globally. As we move through each of the different methods, it's a good idea to write an evaluative point for each one as questions often ask you to give advantages or disadvantages of them in your exam. First, let's recap the sources of the following greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide, methane, oxides of nitrogen, CFCs and tropospheric ozone. For sources of carbon dioxide, aerobic respiration or decomposition, combustion of fossil fuels, forest fires or volcanic activity for example. Methane, livestock, rice paddy fields, landfill sites, anaerobic respiration or decomposition. Oxides of nitrogen, internal combustion in a vehicle engine or release of nitrate fertilisers. CFCs are released from aerosols and old refrigerators. Tropospheric ozone is a secondary pollutant produced by reactions involving oxides of nitrogen. So anything that releases these gases will also release tropospheric ozone. Pollutants. A primary pollutant is released by human activity, for example, mining. Secondary pollutants are produced when pollutants react with other pollutants or non-pollutants such as oxygen or light to form another pollutant. For example, tropospheric ozone created when NOx gases react with UV. How do we reduce each greenhouse gas? By reducing the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, it will mean less infrared radiation is absorbed and retained and therefore reduce warming. Carbon dioxide. The big cause of CO2 release is combustion of fossil fuels. So to help you think about how to reduce it, we just need alternatives for combusting fossil fuels. For example, using electric or hydrogen powered vehicles instead. We could also use biofuel powered engines. We also combust fossil fuels as an energy source. So switching to renewable energy such as solar, wind or hydroelectric will help reduce this. As we know, trees are essential in reducing the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration. So afforestation or reforestation will help increase the amount of carbon sequestration happening across the globe, thus reducing the greenhouse effect. Furthermore, assigning carbon storage sites or sinks such as peat bogs, permafrost and rainforest as protected areas will help reduce carbon dioxide release. Another method we could use to reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration is carbon capture and storage, CCS, which is a process in which CO2 is pumped underground to be stored in unused mining structures. This is a man-made process and uses the lithosphere to store excess carbon. Methane. Methane is released from landfill sites. Ways to reduce the impacts of landfill sites could be increased recycling, reduced packaging and collecting methane from landfill to use as biogas. Another impact of methane is due to livestock production. So by reducing intensive livestock production or increasing crop production will help with this. Again, the protection of sites such as permafrost will stop any damaging activities and slow methane release. Methods such as ploughing and draining soils can be used to aerate them and therefore reduce anaerobic decomposition and respiration. Oxides of nitrogen. For oxides of nitrogen, their main release is from vehicle engines. So again, any method that reduces the use of fossil fuel powered vehicles will help this, such as using public transport and switching to electric or hydrogen vehicles. Vehicle exhausts can also be fitted with devices called catalytic converters. They use a metal such as platinum to reduce oxides of nitrogen back into oxygen and nitrogen gases, which are both harmless. In power station waste gases, urea sprays can be used which react with the oxides of nitrogen to form nitrogen gas and steam before releasing them into the atmosphere. 
These control methods would also all apply to reducing tropospheric ozone in the atmosphere as it is produced from reactions between oxides of nitrogen and UV. CFCs For CFCs, you need to know the main components of the Montreal Protocol, which did four main things. It banned the production of CFCs, encouraged use of alternative materials like butane and aerosol cans instead of CFCs, encouraged the use of alternative processes, for example roll-on deodorants instead of aerosols, and ensured the proper disposal of CFC-containing materials, like the incineration of old refrigerators. We will look at CFCs in our ozone depletion video in lots more detail. We are now going to look at some techniques known as geoengineering. This can be defined as a method put in place to try and manipulate global climatic processes to try and reduce the effects of global warming. Examples of geoengineering. Painting rooftops of all buildings white to try and reflect more UV back into space by raising the albedo. Sending solar shades into orbit to reduce UV reaching the Earth. Artificial upwelling devices placed in the ocean. Adding nutrients to the sea to stimulate algal blooms, which would eventually die, taking any sequestered carbon to the seabed. Some of these are completely untested and simply in the design stage, as they often have quite large knock-on effects to the ones we may expect. As they are all designed to manipulate large-scale climatic processes, which are interconnected and difficult to understand fully, the impacts can be quite unpredictable. If climate change continues and we cannot successfully reduce or reverse it, then we will need to learn to adapt to the changing climate. There are lots of examples of how this might happen, but here are a few for you to consider. Flood protection to protect against sea level rise. This could be anything from artificial riverbanks or coastal defences. These would also help reduce coastal erosion. Managed retreat. Allowing the process of erosion to occur in specified areas where it would cost too much to protect them and the land's value does not outweigh the cost. Urban drainage control. Increasing the permeability of urban areas by swapping impermeable tarmac surfaces for permeable gravel ones. River flow management. Having control of a river's flow in terms of both velocity and volume of water to prevent flooding. Floating houses. Designing houses that will float on the surface of a water body. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.